Howdy, folks. Well, I'm here to start talking about, I think it's pipe number eight. I kind of lost count. I'll have to go to my website and see how many I've made. I think it's pipe number eight. This pipe I've been working on a little bit at a time, largely because I haven't quite figured out how to do it yet. It's a fairly complicated pipe compared to ones I've made before, which is maybe only seven pipes, of which only about three are any good. And, um, you know, like I've done with the last couple of pipes, I, uh, they're for friends, and I let them go on to commercial pipe sites and find ones that they like, and then I try to make ones that look like that. Given my limited abilities uh, as somebody who's made fewer than, you know, ten pipes in his life and learned it all from YouTube in one book. Kind of nice book. Um, this one is based on... I'm reshooting this because I realize nobody can see these. This one's based on the Fibonacci series, so I'm going to hold this up close, and hopefully you can see that it's a nice spiral. It's also sometimes called the Golden Spiral, the Fibonacci Spiral. The Fibonacci series is one of these series they teach you in elementary school and then you forget about it. Uh, you, it's basically a series where each number in the series is the sum of the previous two. So you start out with 0 and 1 because you have to have two numbers to do the series. 0, 1. And then you add 0 and 1 together and you get 1 again. So you get the next number is 1. And then you add 1 and 1 together and you get 2. And then you add 1 and 2 together and you get 3. And then you add uh, 3 and 2 together and you get 5. And then you add 5 and 3 together and you get 8. And blah, 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 right? You can Google it. And the key with this spiral, I'll hold it up close again so that hopefully you can see it. It's not printed super darkly. Uh, is that you make a spiral of squares. Each square has the side length, the number in the Fibonacci sequence. So 1, 1, 2, 3, 5, 8, etc. Um, and then if you draw nice curved arcs between the corners of the squares, you get this spiral. And the spiral to me looks like a snail shell, but it's called a golden spiral or the Fibonacci spiral. It's very complicated. Now, I'm going to walk up here again because you can't see this. I don't do this. One of the big problems here, let me grab a stem, got these nice stems, is that the stem is supposed to land right on this curvy part. Right? And of course, if you want to land a stem on something that's curved, you're going to have a gap because you know this is flat. Imagine this is this is the the shoulder of the stem, you know, that part right there that touches the edge of the wood. Um, you know, imagine that's the, the shoulder, and then you've got a curve. There's a curve. Now, and you're going to end up with gaps. What can you do about that? Well, what the original pipe maker did was he recessed the fatter part of the stem, which normally this would be on the outside. He recessed this a little bit into the wood. So instead of it sitting on the top, you know, with gaps on the sides, you just kind of put it down a little bit, so it looks like the entire fat part's coming in. It's possible he drilled a hole all the way deeply, where he didn't even machine this down. Um, I think it's unlikely. I don't know. I decided to do the normal 5 sixteenths tenon, um, and then recess that. It's been problematic. So first off, uh, we went, I went over to my buddy's Yogi machine, Yogi's machine shop to machine this down. The whole thing was you know, that wide, all the way out to here. Uh, we spent two hours making a jig to hold the thing so we could do that. This isn't quite perfectly centered, and this often happens, right? You'll find when you buy stems that the holes down the middle that are already there aren't always right in the center. So when you turn this down, it's not always right in the center of the stem, but you don't notice, right? Because when you put the stem into the pipe, the tenon, this doesn't quite fit, but the tenon is buried in the pipe, and you don't see that, you know, this fatter part is a little off-center from where the hole is drilled into the pipe. Well, that's all well and good as long as you only have one fit hole that you've got to drill into the pipe. As soon as you get two of them, now you imagine you got, you know, a thing like this and then a thing that's like this. Well, how are you going to drill that so that you don't have gaps around the top, especially because you have to be able to rotate this thing, otherwise you can't get the stem out, right? So if this is severely off-center, then you have to make a big enough big enough uh, hole, imagine if, if you will it's like this, well the diameter of the hole, that, or the radius of the hole you have to make is from here to here, right? As a, you can't just drill a hole that's this that's this diameter because you won't be able to rotate it. Once you stick the stem in there, you know, you want to take it apart to clean it, you'll never get it out again. So they have to be kind of close. But they're not perfect, which means you have to make 
the hole a little bit bigger. The other problem is they're not really round. And this one's worse than the other one, which is a little weird. Um, I don't know if you can see it. Let me walk over here and see if you can see this. I have to hold it up against something white. See if we can see this. Eh, not really. It's, you can kind of get an idea as I turn it. It's kind of squarish, and it's, it's clearly made in two halves, and this half is a little lower than that half, right? It's a clamshell mold, and the clamshell didn't quite line up on this one. So, so on this one, you know, where, right where this, this seam here is, it's not, you can hear the difference if I, if I go down this way versus if I go down that way, right? It's because this part here is actually offset towards the camera, and that part there is offset away from the camera. So you get sort of a, a, a ledge right there going in that direction, and you just sort of slide off a cliff going in this direction. But how do you drill a hole, you know, where that's like that? So I'm going to have to spend some time sanding that. I, try, I was hoping I could do it in the machine lathe, but we just couldn't, we couldn't get it in there. Uh, in the future, I'm going to have to make a different clamp, you know, one that clamps back here, and then we'll be able to do this. But we didn't have it. We didn't have time to do it. I bought two of these stems because I figured we'd screw one up. This one's much better. It's aligned, right? Uh, the top and the bottom half of the, of the um, molds are aligned, but it's still very squarish, right? It's got corners where, you know, the diameter from there to there is much bigger than the diameter from there to there. So it's still not a circle. I'm going to have to work on it to make it a circle. That's all right. Yeah. It's pretty darn easy to sand vulcanite. Uh, I'll make it a nice circle. What you end up, though, is you end up with things that don't exactly match any sort of drill bit size. It's already started, you know, it's kind of squarish. It doesn't match any drill bit size. So I've tried a few different things. I've been using this piece of wood, which those of you who watch my YouTube channel may remember as my first shot at a piece pipe where the, uh, where the bore drill came in like this and then came down out the bottom. And then I cut it in half with a bandsaw to see what was going on. So, so I got this nice piece of hard maple that's, you know, ruined for making anything. But it's nice and hard, and so I figured I could, I could work with different drill bits and things to, to figure out how to do this. And I tried a step drill bit first, and it turns out it just steps it way too far down. By the time I get it to the right size here, um, it's, it's cut away the whole bottom part. You know, it's, it's too wide down there, so the thing just sits in the hole and flops around. This one here, I got a, a real drill bit. You know, I'm using a 5 16 in the middle there, and I got a real drill bit um, that produces approximately this diameter. The problem was one of these drill bits is like this long, and one of them is like this long. And my drill press, we covered this in the last video, my drill press only has a movement of about two inches. So I, I can't, you know, I have to set the table pretty up high to drill the, the hole for the, for the tenon with the 5 16 bit. And then, you know, when I put the other drill bit in, and it's sticks down, you know, down to here, so I gotta move the table down, and when you move the table down, my table is basically loose, it just sort of spins, and you move it around however you want, you can never get it back in the same place, I said, well, maybe if I'm really careful, I can figure it out, and of course, I'm testing it before I blow a $50 block of wood on it, and, um, yeah, I can't, I couldn't get it lined up, so it's totally off-center, uh, and it just doesn't work, it doesn't quite fit, these two tendons are slightly different sizes, um, a little sand, you can fix that. Finally, it turns out pretty, it, I got lucky on this one. My countersink bit is almost exactly the outer diameter of this part here. So it turns out I can drill the 5 16 drill uh, hole down in there for the tenon, and then I can swap out my countersink bit, which is a very short bit. So I can take out the short 5 16 drill and put in a short um, countersink bit without having to move the table, right? So the table stays locked in place. The vise that I have on the table stays right where it is. The wood doesn't move, and I can come down here. And even if it does move a little bit, countersink bits are, are funnel shaped, right? They're they're triangles, so they go goes right in, you know. And basically, it centers itself. So even if you've moved a little bit, if you just bring it down with the power off, you can jiggle it a little bit. It'll center itself, and then you can turn the power on, and you can drill a little bit farther. And I get a pretty it's a pretty nice hole there. I don't know if you can see it in this light. Um, sawdust over. It's not quite quite, quite the right diameter. It's very, very close. So what I'm going to end up doing, honestly, is I'm going to sand this down a bit to make it round and to make it match the size of that hole. Because I tried, I got a little rat tail file, you know, and I tried to file this hole a little bit bigger, and gosh, it's, it's much easier to sand down uh, vulcanite than it is to file out really hard wood, especially when you've only got an eighth inch, right? Most of my files don't even have 
don't even have teeth up to the end. Right? So, you know, you, you're trying to get in there, and you've only got an eighth inch that the file can move up and down, and then at least half of that doesn't even have any teeth on it, and it's, it's a waste of your time. So, so um, you know, I'll get this, I'll sand it. I gotta figure out if I want to do something like put all, uh, you know, put this into a, um, you know, some sort of a mount with a, with a shaft down the middle of it, and then, and then spin this maybe with a drill or something. I've seen people do that. And then, you know, you just touch sandpaper onto it, and you, it makes it round. I, I may try something like that. I can probably, I can probably do that in my drill press. Right? I'll probably spin this in my drill press. Um, I can just clamp onto that, I guess, right, with the, with the teeth of the drill press and spin it and, and lightly put a piece of sandpaper or maybe a, a, a fine file on the edge of that and make it round. That's probably what I'll do. That's not a bad idea. I'm going to try that. I've got two of these, so I can mess one up. But I think I'll try that. The only thing I have to be careful of is I don't clamp that too hard because I don't want to mess up this surface. But I have one of them which is slightly too too big for the hole. It's this one. So that's got to get sanded down anyway. So maybe I'll put that one in there and I'll clamp on it with the, with the jaws of the uh, of the chuck and spin it in my drill press, put a little bit of pressure on it there. I can get some calipers out, not these, but my fancy digital ones and measure exactly the size of the hole. And, uh, and get that down to just the right size and have it a little bit rounder than it is now. Um, and, uh, and then I'll still be able, if, if I leave teeth marks from the, from the chuck, I need to sand that part a little bit, sand those teeth marks off, because i got to sand this off a little bit anyway to make it fit in the hole. That's not a bad plan. I like that plan. I made that up as we were doing. Um, so I originally thought, I have to move close for this one, I originally thought this was going to get laid out like this, so the spiral was going to go here like this. But what I ended up doing is, is downloading, you know, one of these spirals off of Wikimedia and throwing it into PowerPoint and printing out, you know, a sheet of paper that's got a bunch of different sizes of it. Um, and then not just different sizes, but also reflections of it, right? So not rotations, but reflections. Um, so that I could figure out the right size. It turns out this one in the middle is the size that I like. Uh, and then you've got, it's these two match, right? Yeah. Then you've got, you know, you've got a template. Uh, and it, it's going to go on both sides of this piece of wood. So I originally thought it would go, you know, this way, and it kind of does. It kind of does. Um, but this cut on this edge right here is actually probably going to interfere. Right? It's going to hit where this stem is supposed to be. It's it's not good. So I'd have to go with a smaller spiral, or it turns out I just rotate the thing 180 degrees, and if I if I build it like this it'll work. And the limiter will be this side now, because these things are never regular, right? This side here is a little bit lower than here, so i got to get my reflection. This is why it helps to have the reflection uh, to go on the other side, and I can go, yeah, yeah, it'll, it'll fit on that side too. Now, I do have to kind of look down from the top here and get these guys lined up uh, to make sure that, you know, it doesn't fit on one side over here and on the other side over there, and when I'm done, I have a diagonal pipe or something, it doesn't work. Um, but, you know, I think what I'm going to end up doing is I'll cut these out along the spiral lines and I will somehow affix it to the wood. And then I will, you know, lay out my bores um, right on this piece of paper. Uh, and, you know, sand or probably... I don't think I need a band saw this one, honestly. The, the block of wood isn't that big compared to what I'm trying to make. I think it'll be easier to knock this off with the, uh, with the little two-inch belt sander. One-inch belt sander. One by thirty. Uh, and uh, I think it'll be easier and I won't mess it up and I'll be able to look at both sides and make sure everything's still fitting. Well, with the bandsaw, once you start cutting with the bandsaw, it's pretty difficult to check your work as you go. You're pretty much committed to it. So I'm not good enough to like to commit that early. And it's going to fit perfectly. It's about a you know two and a quarter inch uh, height there. And then you know, it'll look like that and then the stem, the stem will go in there. Um, I've got Plateau. I've never worked with Plateau before. I've always used Evachon, but thought I'd try it because it, it should have nicer grain inside. I'm not going to try to preserve the bottom. This design doesn't want that and, you know, honestly, I don't really know what I'm doing. Uh, when it comes to that, I made one pipe and I tried to do that and that pipe worked terrible. Um, it also smokes terribly. That was the second pipe I ever made, sitting right over there. Uh, I'm not going to try to do that. So I, I'll be ruining all this beautiful bark that's falling off on the table anyway. The next shop, next stop out into the garage to lay this out, you know, with some tape or glue or something and start sanding and then drill again.
Okay, the next step here is we gotta square up these sides so that when we put it in the drill press vise, it holds it nice and square. this uh, little golden spiral printout that I had and a little bit of glue in three different places. This one here just wouldn't stick. I just used a little CA glue so I shot a little accelerator on top of the paper. The paper was a little curled and that's made a giant mess. Uh, I tried a couple of different layouts of this. You can see that line there, that top one. I didn't like that one. It ended up at a weird angle. Um, I'm kind of setting this pipe up to look like this. Now, now this is going to come up farther than the top of the paper. I'll bring it up more towards the top of the wood. And possibly, possibly I can save a little bit of this, a little bit of this um, plateau, actually, around the rim of that. It might look good. I'll try that. I don't know how good I am at that. I don't know how good I am at drilling through this with, you know, the spade. Um, so I ended up with this line here, this bottom one. I like that one better. And um, I put a 13 16 inch spade bit in there. And, around that so it look about like that. Originally with the other line I had this out. It just looked a little too thin here. Right? I had maybe only a little over an eighth of an inch between the, the bowl and the edge of the pipe on that and I said well that'll make a hot spot it'll burn through eventually. Give it a little bit more here. I got another sixteenth or so. So got plenty of room on that as we go down the middle. And it's a little bit at an angle. Um, you know you can hold the pipe. The pipe isn't going to be designed oh it has to just exactly be like this. You know once you get it in your hand Having that at a little bit of an angle is no big deal, or you can just tilt it a little bit more. We'll see how the stem comes out. But I should have enough meat, you know, around here. Uh, the stem is, the fat part's going to be about like that, and a thin part, you know, maybe here. And then I can have plenty of room for a good long tenon, you know, without, without getting close to this. So this line here I'll drill with an eighth of an inch. Hopefully I have an eighth of an inch bit that's that long. I have one that's really super long that I used for my piece pipe. And then we'll drill that. But right now, what I want to do is I want to take the the, belt, the small belt sander and I want to kind of ease off here a bit to get a flat spot there to drill. Now, maybe maybe I'll take the bandsaw and cut this edge off here. Uh, I probably should do that because if I have to if I have to sand that much off, that's going to be a big pain. If you can get an idea of the perspective here, uh, you know, that's like close to an inch, seven eighths of an inch. That's way too much to take off with the belt sander, I think. That's done. I took this edge off here, rounded this a little bit here. You can see, hopefully, let me see if I can watch this while I do it. You can see this line comes right here and it hits right at that corner. All right, so supposedly I gotta drill right on this edge here, which isn't gonna happen. So I'm just gonna take my little belt sander, uh, my one inch belt sander, and I'm going to, you know, actually right now I'm just gonna do this flat. Eventually it'll get curved, but right now to drill it I want that flat so that the drill doesn't wander around. I gotta have at least a little spot for it to land on that's flat. That shouldn't take very long. There's a line. I put a little, little dot there the line a little bit and it'll be okay. Uh, that little dot there is for where I'm going to run the starter drill. If you just try, you think of an eighth of an inch as being pretty small, but if you try to drill this super hardwood with an eighth of an inch, it always moves a little bit. So you've got to put a little divot there first and then you've got to uh, go with a smaller drill first if you're not okay with it wandering. Uh, the other thing I'm doing here is I've measured from this edge to where I want this to stop and oddly enough it's a coincidence that it's exactly two inches. Um, so you know, I'll drill that two inches and then I'll bring the bore down. Oops, it's hard for me to hold the camera and this ruler at the, at the same time. Two inches, and then I'll, you know, I'll, then I'll drill out the chamber until I hit that line right there. So two inches is how far. Okay. Now 
now I switch to an eighth. So now I've got to set my depth gauge to two inches, but I'm not quite on there. So I've got to first go down with my depth gauge and it says I engage at, oops, that's zero. And I'm engaging, I'll tighten that up at just a smidge over one eighth of an inch down. Actually, I think I'm not doing it all what I do for there. Okay. So one eighth of an inch down. So now I set this to two and an eighth, and I should get two inches. Come on. Two and just a smidgen over an eighth. So from the wood, right down two inches and stop. Start right. Mark the depth on here for how far in this needs to go. I'm going to go a little bit short because you can cut this off afterwards to fit it perfectly uh, or file it off. Um, I need to leave a little bit of a recess uh, for the big part <clears throat> right over here. This is now a 5 16 inch drill bit. I have to get it lined up. I have set the depth on this already using my the depth stop here. If you stop right at the line that I've drawn, I just have to get this guy back centered right there. Yep. And then I draw. So I've never drilled through plateau before. I've marked the center, you know, right above the bore. I'm going to go with a small drill bit. I've got a little center punch there. Go with a small drill bit. It's very bumpy where I'm trying to drill here. So I just don't think I can go straight in with the spade bit without it just tearing everything up. So I'm going to go with a number of bits getting larger. It'll take longer. Maybe it's unnecessary, but I haven't done it before, so we're going to give it a shot. I set it to right about where I think it should be so that if I get down to that deep and nothing and hit anything, then I know I gotta start screwing around really carefully. Okay. That guy right in the middle. Got a little dot in a circle that I line up. This one is going to chatter, so I'm going to, going to clamp this. Okay, here goes nothing. be hard to see. We just touched it. It looks like I got to take my 1 8 and just send it through there to clean out that hole because we've shoved a wood chip up in it. But it's right there. It's exactly where it should have been. That is perfect. 
get. Okay, here's a good shot. I cleaned out the piece of wood that I stuffed up into the hole, and it hits right there at the bottom. It's exactly how it was supposed to. It's maybe a smidge off center, but barely. Nah, that should work perfectly. That looked good, and I didn't, I didn't mess up this edge up here too badly. A little bit of chip out right there, but nothing really serious. Probably take a file or something and smooth around the inner edge there. Maybe I can keep that. All right, now I have to, uh, I have to start shaping it. It'll be mostly the one-inch sander, belt sander, shaping around the outside, and then carving. But, you know, all the hard parts that have to be perfect are done now. Now, I've got this nice and rounded. It's time for me to put the countersink in there in order to fit the stem. So what I'm done here is I've already taken this out so I could sand it, right? So now I've put the drill bit back in that I've drilled that tenon hole with the 5 16 and I put it back into the hole. That way I can bring the table up here, I can clamp this thing on and I can get the right angle so that I can swap this bit out and, um, you know, go in parallel to the hole that's already in there, concentric with it, I guess. Um, that way it should fit better. I gotta go a little deeper with the 5 16 it looks like. That's about right. I'm go a little deeper with my 5 16 I cut that one a little short, but I cut it too short. I don't know if you can see in there. There we go, yeah. You can see there's a gap there. That's because I cut the 5 16 a little short because I didn't know how deep I was gonna put this. So I can fit it later. I said I'll drill that out a little bit more. Right now, I said I was gonna cut the tenon off, but I wanna. I want to maintain more support. So I'm just going to drill that 5 16 a little bit deeper and see you know, if I can get that to meet up perfectly. All right, that is meeting up pretty darn well now. You can see it goes in this side. There's virtually no gap. It's virtually the same size. Now, this thing is still not quite round. What I said I was going to do is put it in the drill press and put a little bit of sand on it. I'm going to do that now, and then it'll fit even better. I got some 220 sandpaper here. I don't want to go too bad, or too coarse. I've cut it to about the width of this part here. I'm just going to hold it on here as long as that spins. No idea how that fits. Nice and round. Oops, we're good with the camera today. My zoom is way up. Okay, there we go. Fits in the hole. Meets up nicely there. Give it a little chamfer around the end. Should be beautiful. Now carving. I pull the paper off. The little spots where it's glued, they're all going to be filed away or sanded away, so that's no big deal. Um, I've taken a coping saw and a wood chisel, and I've made a little bit of a, of a cut out here. Um, I didn't want to try that on the on the tables or excuse me on the uh, band saw because the band saw, gosh has a tendency to sort of wander a bit and you really can't fix this. But so this is going to be a circle around this. And then this is going to kind of be curved around and take some shoulders off. It should be interesting looking. Um, I've drawn a couple of lines. Uh, these lines take off about a half an inch on either side. I'm just going to make it so that the center is raised and the side is recessed a little bit. Uh, and then that, that recess on the side will kind of blend away as we get up to the bowl. So it'll be sort of a thin pipe and then it'll widen out at the bowl. Next, it's just a whole lot of Dremel work. Well, now I've started carving. I'm using the standard, uh, one of my standard cuts all coarse burr cutters. This one's the sphere. 
got the flame there. I got a couple of these Dremel ones. I talked about these in the last video. Uh, I've been shaping it. This is kind of what it's supposed to look like in this clay model. It didn't come out quite the way I want. But for one thing, you know, you can see this is actually the clay model is a little rotated, but um, the angles are a little different on this. But this is kind of what it's going to look like. Sort of a ridge down around the back here, which I've already did that, shaped that already with the uh, with the belt sander. And now I'm just slowly cutting away to get to a shape that's more like this. It's just going to take some time. I've I've made a circle around here where I've left a little bit of the plateau around the edge. I'm going to try to preserve that um, and make sort of a nice bowl around there that somehow mates into this shape here. There'll be some weird undercutting in this area here, which probably the flame bit will have to do. I'm not quite sure. But, you know, if you go slowly, then you can make it look good. I gotta say, this one's one of the more challenging ones I've done. I think it's coming along. Uh, it's crooked. I figure out what to do about the fact that it's crooked. Um, really what happened was the top of this, the block, the wooden block was crooked. But I drilled everything as though it was straight. And now I decided to leave that rim, which means the rim sticks up there. Which means visually you want to go like that. Which makes this part down here look crooked. It's actually all straight, except for the top is crooked. And I could sand that off, but I have that beautiful plateau there that I've preserved. Hmm. I'm not sure. Uh, you know, I've got it largely shaped. It's not completely shaped yet. I've been at this for, I don't know, an hour or two. <clears throat> I've switched to the, the Dremel barrel shaped cutter uh, because there's a lot of flat surfaces. There's a flat surface here and over here. And it turns out it's not that bad for shaping. Um, the one I was trying to do was a little more bulbous than this, but the piece of wood I have wasn't quite wide enough to do quite that shape. But it's coming along here. I think I think I may narrow down this flat part here, which will give me a little more, give me a, the ability to shape this a little bit better without it looking strange. Um, but, you know, it's not going too badly. I got, I'm not going to say, maybe an hour more with the Dremel. Uh, with the cutting bits, and then probably I'll have to... Uh, see, that's very shaped differently here and here. I have to work on that. I'll have to make a little piece of cardboard and cut it out for one side and then match the other side to it. Um, then I'll probably switch to the Dremel flap wheel, which I love now because I used it on the last bike, and then, you know, hand sanding. All right. Well, now I'm done with the power tools. I've, uh, you know, I, I used a lot of this this Dremel barrel shaped tool. I also had to switch to, oh, I've still got one here, the kind of weird rounded one to get around in here. <clears throat> I fixed, I fixed how it looked crooked before, um, and then I've just sort of sanded down one side a little bit to try to get the thing at, at, uh, to, to look straighter relative to the bowl, and then I had to reprofile this side here so that it once I sanded this in, then the bottom looked crooked. So, you know, one thing leads to another. I am now sanding by hand. Um, I tried to use the flap wheel, which worked so well in the last pipe. It's just not working on this shape. Uh, I don't know why. Maybe I wore it out and I need a new one, but I don't, I don't have another. So I've been going at it with some hand sanding. I'm using you know, my profile tools. This is 120 grit, which is what you start with. Um, I've been sanding it down. It's gonna take a while. But it's, it's coming along nicely. I still have a lot of tool marks in it. You can see probably in here, maybe you can see, I don't know, some tool marks there, some here. I really haven't sanded the sides of these yet. This is machine sanded, so it's pretty good. I've mostly been working on smoothing the bowl. I have a flat spot right there, because this profile came around, you know, it was quite flat, and it ended up flat there. I'm gonna try to round that off. We have a flat spot here too. These inside radius turns are really hard to do. Um, when you've got the stem in the way. Uh, so, I've got a little sand a little bit there, sand a little bit there. Should be okay if I can, if I can you know, wrap some sandpaper on like that. All right, it is all sanded now. Got it down to the 1500 grit. I can sand it inside here a little bit, not a whole lot, just a little bit, felt a little rough. Uh, now, you know, the next step is to bend the stem. I've got a little flaw right there. If you can see that, a flaw right there. Um, and there's another one right here. But overall, it's pretty good. There's a little bit of stuff here that'll probably blend right in. 
Um, this one's going to be a little bit conspicuous, but hopefully we don't see it. I'm going to bend the stem down a little bit so that, you know, when you're holding it like this, it'll be roughly horizontal. Not too much of a bend, just sort of the standard bend. I've done that before. Heat gun, a couple of seconds. Make sure you have the stem in straight before you bend it a little off. Okay, now I gotta stain this. Now I got a couple of different colors. I've got a dark brown, and I've got a saddle tan. So traditionally, when you leave plateau like this, you my son is learning to play the guitar. It's very exciting in the garage. Um, well, traditionally, when you leave plateau like this, you, you stain this part a darker color and then lighter forever. So I'm gonna start, I'm gonna have this upside down, and I'm gonna stain with the dark brown, sort of this bottom part here. And then I am going to do the rest of the pipe in the saddle tan. I am using, you know, these are generic, uh, what do we call these? Cotton swabs or something? I don't know. I don't want to use the official word because they're not that brand. Giving this a little shake and we'll proceed. I'll try to do this on camera. But I'm going to be just sort of doing that part. I don't want it to drip onto the rest of the pipe, which is why I'm doing it kind of angled down like that. Got a little bit, you know, maybe it's spreading out there. I'm not quite, I'm not quite sure how to do this. Exactly. We'll get it around there. You know, it's soaking into the, the crevices and such. Um, and then, I may have to take a little bit of isopropyl alcohol and uh, wipe any places where it looks like it shouldn't be. But I think it's going to be okay. There's just a little bit of migration. That's not a bad color right there. Um, somewhat of a traditional method to do this. I looked at a lot of custom-made pipes that have plateau, and they all have this. And if you read, like, Pipedia or something, it recommends you do this. Oh, I just dripped a little bit there. That's no good. I'm going to clean that up. So the second coat was probably a bad idea. Hold it down like that. If I can blot it a little bit like that. Probably I should set it on fire, right? That's what most people do, is they set it on fire. Uh, let's get a little bit of isopropyl here. 91% isopropyl. You want a high concentration of isopropyl. This is water stir alcohol soluble, so I'll just clean that a little bit there. It'll it's not gonna come completely off, but it'll blend out pretty well. I just don't want to leave a lot of big globs around the edge. It doesn't have to be a very clean edge, it can be blended. This isopropyl will spread a little bit of the dye. So what we'll end up with is sort of a blended edge, I think. Feathered, whatever you want to call it. Right. Get off those big drips. Give it a little roll on that. Yeah, that should do it. Doesn't look bad. Cut this up so it doesn't all evaporate. And now we go with the saddle tan. Put that somewhere else. And we start staining this guy. So you 
you really can't tell right up at the edge that there's any bleed over from the other color. That's nice. I like the saddle tan color. It seems to be about the right color. You're going over this, take some time. I've shown in the previous video, it doesn't really matter if there's little overlap lines or anything, because they come right out. You can just wipe them down with a cloth and they'll come right out. I don't think I should do in the pocket. I'll just give it a big a little wipe in the pocket. Won't hurt it. It's not like it's the chamber where it burns, so you're not supposed to do in there, but the pocket doesn't matter. So you can see I get those streaks and you just you just wipe them with the cotton swab and they go away. And this stuff dries pretty quickly. The hardest part is figuring out where to hold it because the easiest thing would be to stick your finger in the hole there and do it. Um, when I've done that I've always had a little bit of stain on my gloves and it always gets in the in the chamber and then it doesn't look good. You know, It burns out right away but you're not supposed to do it so I try not to do it. So you can see that flaw there has gotten fairly dark, but it doesn't look bad. It kind of matches this up here. It's turned black. And that one there, you can see. But, you know, that's the joy of, of, of carving real wood. You know, not something synthetic. It's not going to be perfect. It's not the perfect shape quite. You know, it's not, it's not the perfect consistency everywhere. But it's very organic. So it looks real. I think two coats of this is probably going to be enough. Whoops. Should we get in these little corners here? These are the hardest part of this to make. It's getting those things right there. That corner right there and up around here. Getting that sanded without leaving any tool marks. That was a nightmare. That took a really long time. Like I'm not going to put any more stain on. I think that's the right amount of stain. And I'm just going to rub it around until it dries. Which with alcohol-based stain is pretty quickly. Now it's, it's cold here in the garage today. As it has been the whole time I've been making this. Today's a warmer day than most. Uh, it's about 25 degrees outside right now. It's... It's probably a balmy 60 here in the garage. This isn't going to dry quite as fast as it would when I'm making pipes in the summer. I don't have a climate-controlled garage. I thought about putting in a Mitsubishi split, mini split system, but it's a lot of money and I'm out of electrics. So I have to upgrade my electric service again. I already did that once when I put in air conditioning for the second floor of the house. Because we only had one air conditioner. It wasn't enough. I think that looks good. We'll see that that looks good. All right. There we go. All done. I can't stop the camera because I'm wearing gloves. Okay, almost done. One thing I'm going to do different with the polish this time is I'm going to polish the stem separate from the stumble. Normally you polish them together because you don't want to mess up the mating surface, but because this one is recessed in there, I can polish right around there and it won't affect the mating surface. I also need to polish this part here 
that's going to go into that hole so that you know, even if I turn it a little bit, it stays polished all the way around because this is curved here. Right? Oh, 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 there's just dust. This is curved right here. So, you know, if you polished right along this and then you got this in a few degrees off, it wouldn't be, it wouldn't be right. So we'll just get going on the polishing machine. White diamond polish on the left one. I covered this on uh, my last video, pipe number seven, flying squirrel, I think, video. Uh, so I'll probably just skip over most of this. Nice and shiny after the polish stage. Now for the waxing stage where it really, really finishes it off. Pure carnival wax. Done. Looks pretty good. So now I'm going to show you the side-by-side -side comparison. We're going to start out with it just sanded and stained, no polishing. Now let's bring in the white diamond polish. See, it looks much nicer, much shinier. And then finally, we're going to end up with a few coats of carnauba wax. And it doesn't make it much shinier, but what you can see is a little bit more depth of the color. You can see it almost looks like there's a much thicker finish on it, just like when you wax a car. All right, and that's the end of my golden spiral pipe. Thanks everyone for watching. Please hit the subscribe button if you like the video.